What is going on, my Ghost Squad? Uh, just wanted to jump on for a little live Every Second Matters, April 2018 edition. Uh, hope everybody's having a great day. What's going on? Hey, link you. All right. Let me send you a link real quick, Tech. And I will... Hold on just a second. Anybody else wants a link? Let me know. And uh, I'd love to have you on. We're just going to talk a little Second Amendment today and talk about some legislation that's out there and, and what we can and can't do and what we should and should not be doing. Let me go ahead and real quick. Hold on here. Sorry. Uh, here we go. And paste it real quick. There you go. All right, Kev. It's over there. So let's see what's going on. We got uh, we are going live right now on YouTube. We're simulcasting live as well over on GunChannels.com. And if you haven't checked it out yet, go check it out. I'll put a link out there in the uh, in the chat real quick. GunChannels.com. There you go. It's a great community for uh, pro gun, pro second A, uh, pro two A Second Amendment uh, talk and and all that. We've got a lot of great people over there. A lot of knowledgeable people. Uh, most of your content creators and show hosts that you watch throughout the week are over on Gun Channel. So come check us out. It's free to join and all that stuff. So let's check out uh, who is over on the YouTube side right now. Kevin, the Tack Daddy, John 12 Gage. What's going on, John? Tardot, what's going on? Uh, let's see here. Hottie, what's up, too, Hottie? Demont, what's going on? Hoorah, Double Dog. That guy's wife. Hey, Armenta, how are you doing, sweetheart? Rich White, the 1%. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Just Dano with G Webs not attending. Who has a list of all those that requested a media pass? Um, I believe that he is uh, taking care of that already with, uh, I believe, Clover. So I think Clover's going to be handling the media passes. So get with Clover. Um, so other than that, let's see here. Is Tack jumped in yet? Not yet. Come on in, Tack. So what we're going to do, guys, is I don't know if you guys are familiar with Every Second Matters, but uh, obviously the second of every month we talk about the Second Amendment and uh, how we can uh, be better activists regarding our Second Amendment rights. And we talk a little bit about what you do to um, maybe what, what do you do on Every Second Matters? A lot of people, you know, open carry or they do something at the range. They do something at their local gun shops and all that. So uh, we'll talk about what you guys do for Every Second Matters, and then we'll talk a little bit about um, what's going on in, in the nation, the nationwide legislation, and we'll, uh, we got some stuff here on the state-by-state, uh, state. if you guys want to know what's going on. I've got a list of everything. Um, let's see here. I just saw someone else jump in. Carolina, boy, the tank driver. You are present, my man, so welcome. Uh, Midnight Range, what's up? All right. Um, so, like I said, uh, we're not going to. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, How buddy? are you? So you're, you're chilling by the pool today, huh? Yeah, it's hot. Yeah, it's all hot. Of a sudden, all of a sudden. Must be nice. Yeah. It's like it 41 degrees here. here. Am I echoing Am I... to you? No, not okay. at all. Good deal. How you doing, man? Uh, I'm good. Yeah, it's it's like 41 degrees here and. So, you Damn. know, nice and gray. You got to love it. Well, Such they got as, snow up the East Coast from what I heard too, right? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw, I think John said that up in New York, they were getting like three or four inches today or something like that. That's crazy. It's April. It it's is. Nuts. And it's, it's nuts. I mean, um, yeah, go figure. Go figure. So what's going on in Flow Rider? A uh, little of this, a little of that. Um <laughs> In the land of the clear backpacks today. Got some oh, did it start? 
Did it start today? Uh, yeah, I'll have them in my hands here in a moment when the kids get home. They had some after school stuff, but they'll be home soon enough. Uh, I got yeah. texted the pictures. I put them up on uh, Instagram. But uh, you know, it's funny when you think about all the things that, all the suggestions people were making about what the kids could do just to you know mess with admin. There is a bunch of different things you could put in them that. Oh yeah. Aren't illegal, but my favorite is just backpack in a backpack. Find one that's perfectly sized, and just put it inside the backpack. That's technically not wrong. And hey, hey, man. Clear backpack. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm pretty. I'm pretty upset about the whole thing still with the fact that they're ignoring the cop issue. They're ignoring all the other things that we know, and these are band aids, and we all know that. You know, the other thing oh. that I saw a picture of is they've got the you know the barricades are set up so this area where the kids used to go through the front, you know, of the school and it's big open area. Now there's like you know, back and forth barriers, almost like, you know, TSA lines. And right. um, I think they're setting them up. I'm pretty sure they've mentioned it enough that it sounds like the metal detectors are coming. And now I'm sitting here, I'm like, you know, where do my kids go to school again? Well, I think a lot of the problem is, like you said, they're, they've got all these different ideas. And, and like I said, I'm not there. So I can, I'm only going go on by what I'm hearing from you and, and other uh, media sources. But it seems like to me that a clear backpack um, is, it does not seem like it would it's, like other ways to get around. It's like the weirdest thing to try, you know, it's, it's like a fucking bump stock. It's like who came up with this idea yeah. and then who implemented it and got it fucking done. I'm sorry if I'm not supposed to curse today. Um, you know, who I don't, who, I don't care. Yeah, I, didn't go hear, ahead. I didn't hear. Okay, cool. I didn't hear anyone propose it and ask for feedback. I didn't hear anyone say it was just the superintendent was like, we've got a donor. We're getting them. I don't know if this is going to be countywide or what, but it's definitely at our school. Yeah. Um, the only thing that they did do that I approve of is they have included state troopers in the mix. Yeah. And now it's not just BSO. There also actually is uh, several state Florida state troopers. And if you know anything about the Florida state troopers, that's the next level in terms of law enforcement. These guys, um, I would think that the professionalism is at a level that's t a tad bit higher than the BSO. Yeah. So a, I, I guess that's the easiest way to put it. Sure. I don't know. Uh, they were saying, what are we carrying today? I'm going with uh, today. I'm going with my Marine Corps holster with my Glock 19. Nice. So, I'm going with the Glock 19 because I'm going open carry today. So this is an outside the waistband uh, paddle. Uh, so I'm going with the Glock today. Um, I so rack I'm, my uh, I rack my shield today. Going well, low profile with a pair of shorts and a right t-shirt, and I'll put that. You know, I've always had that around. So, uh, but sure. right now I'm going I'm going Glock 19 today. Nice. So what is everybody else out there carrying? I know that someone said that they were carrying uh Clover jump Clover jumped in. Oh, what's up, Clove? Gentlemen. Oh, buddy. He said gentlemen. Ooh. Yeah, serious. I just you talking about. <laughs> uh let's see here. We've got uh Jimmy Rant said Glock 19, 20 and 26, sometimes it's 357. But uh, I think he also came down and says he only carries a Glock 20 when he's camping. So, um, Rusty Shackelford says he's really starting to become a 1911 lover. Uh, okay. I guess if good. Must. If you must. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll give my take on 1911s. I have one. I own a 1911. I like it. I like the tactical I forty-five. And the, I like the FNX tactical forty-five a lot better. Yeah, I mean, if, if I'm going to go a forty-five, I mean, like I said, I have nothing against nineteen. I just don't necessarily like the nineteen eleven platform. Maybe it's because it's just everyone's out got them and everyone loves them and all that. Maybe I just like being a little different. But I don't know. I don't know. Do you uh, own one? Do you own one? I do not own a 1911 because I mean I've shot them many 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 times. I just choose not to own one. Do you agree uh, that they're fun to shoot at 20 yards because they're pretty damn accurate? I like I said I like the way they shoot and I like everything about them. I just there's something about them I guess that 
I'm not a 1911 fanboy. Just like I, I love Glocks. I've got a lot of Glocks, and a lot of people don't like Glocks. But for me, I do. I, t- I choose not to have a 1911. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Um, I want to know. I want to go train a class and rock a 1911 and see if, and just literally run it the way I run a, a polymer gun. Yeah. Which is pretty, again, sure. hard. Drop it. Lots of reloads, lots of, oh, lots Grimm's of malfunctions, intentional, all that stuff. Yeah. I love the fact that Grim's teaching today and he stops in for a few minutes during his lunch break. So what's up, Grim? Take care of yourself. Go teach a kid something. Be productive in the classroom. So uh, it's all good. Clover, are you still, are you carrying anything for today? Wood on it. Who did what? Are you carrying anything differently today than you normally would carry on an everyday basis, or are you no. trying something new out for the second, or what? No, I grabbed the old Taurus. And there you go. I just got back from town, actually. So, oh, did you? I saw your lovely wife out there. So, let's see here. Award goes to Ghost Tech. Uh, thanks. Uh, not really sure. Now, now roll call says what I change. You know, basically, he's talking about a nine millimeter, nineteen eleven, and I think everyone kind of knows that nine millimeter is my favorite uh, handgun uh, caliber. But no, it, it really has nothing to do with caliber. It, it has nothing. As I like the forty five ACP round, I just don't really like the nineteen eleven. And I said, there's nothing actually about that I dislike. It's just I choose not to have one. I, I don't like know. Them. Why. I don't know. I don't know why. I like them more when they're tricked out, when they're more of a race gun or, you know, a bullseye yeah. pistol or something like that. I like them more than just, you know, standard right. figuration. We got Moon over there on the gun channel side. Knives, John Z, Michael G. What's going on? We've got Outlaws joining us over on the YouTube side. So, um, Rusty Sackleford says that Rock Island makes a 10 millimeter 1911 that's double stack, he thinks. Um, you know, a 10 millimeter 1911, that might be something to think about. Now, that 10 millimeter rounds are pretty pretty awesome round, but, you know, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't is know. Is it really? Hold on. Is it really? No, it's, 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 it's not. It's better than the 40. I, I, think it's, I think it's monkey brain. I think it's 9, 10. 10 better than 9. Ten, awesome. I didn't, I didn't say it better with none. Not nine. you, not you. I think that the, when everyone talks about all how awesome ten millimeter is, I don't have a ton of experience with it, but I'm not convinced that it's this beast that everyone says it is. And then they all hate forty. It's like, wait a minute. So you like nine, but you hate thirty eight to or three eighty as well. I love three eighty. I mean, that's the breakdown, right? Yeah. Isn't yeah. It, isn't a ten millimeter? Isn't a forty a ten a short ten millimeter in essence? In or essence. Am I wrong on yeah. that? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I just, everyone loves ten millimeter, and it just makes me laugh because I'm just like, why? Nostalgia, yeah. I think. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, wait till the eleven millimeter comes out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what about the twelve? <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> comes out? There's already it's been an eleven millimeter French for years. Oh, all right, the twelve then. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'll just play it. Uh, Jimmy says a 10 millimeter matches his 357 for sure. So there you go. Yeah. What What is it about 10 that everyone likes so much? I don't Honestly, know. is it the punch? Is it the, the, the yeah, distance it covers? The, what is it? Probably more hotter. You get, um, you get a similar, similar to a, you know, to a Magnum, to a 357 Magnum. Oh, okay. okay. With, a, with basically the same recoil factor as a 40. So it really is banging that hard. I mean, because the, the ones that I oh, shot, yeah. it's like I shot, I've it's shot like hard, a, yeah. a Chris Vector, so you can't really judge that, right? Yeah. Because of that, you know, that weird blowback that they have that, that throws everything. You know, you can't really judge that as how much right. does it kick. Right. Right. Uh, I'm trying to think if I shot a 10 millimeter nine, uh, 1911 once. I think. For me, it was just you know they, I don't know they they gimped the 10 millimeter because women and I guess more limper in. Limp, limp arrested government you know security agents i guess had a problem with the 10 millimeter so they gimped it uh down to the 40 and i just i didn't see a point in hire some more manly men i just didn't see a point in doing that at least with the nine versus the 380 or you know the nine short at least that was a platform purpose back in the day it wasn't oh we're weak we can't handle it it was we want smaller framed pistols, so we designed a little smaller frame, you know, smaller cartridge off this. 
Now, I will say this, that Midnight has uh, an idea that it very well could be true. He said, when the FBI said it was too powerful for their agents, people fell in love with it. That's talking about the 10 millimeter. Right. And yeah. I mean, that's as good a legitimate reason as any, you know. <laughs> hey, we can have something better than the government. What are we talking about? We actually Lord. have a legislation question. The Carolina boy in the uh, Carolina boy, the tank driver. Wants to know any new legislation over in North Carolina. So let's go check out North Carolina. And there is, as of right now, and I, and I go to firearmspolicy.org, uh, and then the take action, um, you can look up any state or federal. And as of right now, they are not showing any new legislation in North Carolina, either good or bad. So as of right now, there is not anything that they that they would so as of right now, there is nothing in North Carolina that is anything. Uh, make sure you check out uh, the local Senate. Oh, dude, what are you doing? My bad. You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Sorry. Oh, I saw like a bull in a china shop. Literally. <laughs> I, I, sorry about that. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, no, it's uh, but no. As of right now, there is nothing over there on North Carolina. Um, let's see. Anybody else have any questions on their home state? I can look it up for you real quick. Uh, now, real quick. Yeah, in he's saying half. that they got some pro gun stuff coming out in uh, Indiana. And I'm, I'm seeing yeah. that. I'm seeing that across the country. I'm seeing a few yeah, states I am too. moving more pro, you know, pro gun, which is which is nice. Yeah, no part of that part of that blowback. Whenever you have, um, whenever you have anti gunners pushing, and then. You know, and I know roll calls have been out there, and and a lot of other ones have been out there at the state capitol. But you know, when we meet, when we meet that uh, with the right type of response, then it can have a it, it can have an effect to where we can actually get things on our side that we want. So, so kudos all to right. roll call and all those guys. Yeah, that's awesome. Zippy wants to know about Tennessee. So there is one um, in Tennessee. It looks like it's the uh, state Senate Bill 1472. Um, it is called the Bump Stock Band. Um, the sponsor is Democrat Lee Harris. And it says uh, this band, this, just going to tell you, throw it in there. It's just basically going to try to, um, man, goodness gracious, they're, they're very vague in this. Uh, this bill could, this is what the Firearms Policy Coalition is saying. This bill could easily ban virtually any device, part, or accessory, including OEM parts that have been refined or machined by a licensed gunsmith that regulates the law enforcement beliefs. It says uh, aftermarket trigger parts, aftermarket springs. Um, man, they are actually, um, holy cow. And it's very, very vague. So uh, the problem you're going to have with this is, yeah, this could this could be interesting. But it is, uh, I'll tell you what, Zippy, I will put this link right out here. You can go check it out. And that is for uh, the Tennessee, um, like I said, it is the SB, which I'm assuming means Senate Bill 1472, the bump stock band. So, um Go check that no, one. Out. And there's no house companion, right? No house companion. Nope. Okay. Uh, does let's it tell, see. Does it tell? Just curious. Is it in committee or has it just been submitted? It or? I think it's just been uh, probably introduced recently by Lee Lee Harris. Okay. And what uh, state was that? That was Tennessee. Tennessee. Tennessee is not heavily Democrat, right? No, no. Uh, let's see here. Here's the update on it. It was placed on the Senate Judiciary Committee calendar for April 3rd, which is tomorrow. Okay. Um, cool. we'll watch that one. Watch that one. It, um, I, think yeah. anything, I think anything right now with the current makeup of the federal government uh, and, then, and then depending on your state government as well, I think anything proposed by a Democrat uh, if it's submitted, I should say, by a Democrat, I don't think it's going to have a chance. What we got to watch is the Republicans squirreling that's, on us. That's going to be the issue. Maybe not introduced, but at least maybe co-sponsored or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it was co, if he had, if he had some Republican co-sponsors, then yeah, it would be definitely some concern there. I think. 
see here. Um, hunting with a handgun will be permanently. Oh, oh real call, okay. Um, Richard Hudson well, is the, the representative, I guess, in Carolina that said he's actually going to try to get less restrictions. That's great. Can I give you a Florida opinion real quick? Go for it. I just think that uh, I was sitting here thinking about it, and I was like, I wonder what's next to Florida. And I was like, probably nothing for a while. You know, they pushed that thing through two weeks after the shooting. It addressed, you know, by their count, four or five bullet points that they felt were important. All that stuff's been enacted. Bump stocks are now illegal here, or at least they are very soon. Um, they changed the age thing. Although, again, you can still go in with your parent and have them gift it to you at back at right. home the same day. Yeah. Uh, what else? Meaning it's not illegal to own one at 18. It's illegal to go into a store. And buy, or it's not illegal. They're not going to let you go into a store and buy one. There are a couple provisions there, including LEO and military. Uh, the mental health thing with the dollars and all that shit. Again, I'm pretty sure that goes right into the vast black hole void that is spending when a budget is granted to any entity that's in the government these days. So who knows what it'll be used for. Um, Pro call and says, feel free to them any of your bump stocks if you don't want. <laughs> I, I've never owned one, so... Neither have I. But I, I have had people say to me, what do I do if I find one in my garage? I'm like, that's a good question. You know? <laughs> Lose uh, it. Lost in the ocean. Again, boat accident. Yeah. It was a lot of boating accidents going on. I, I went out fishing and it, and it fell overboard and I, it hit the bottom of the ocean somewhere. You wouldn't believe it. I took my entire arsenal out on a canoeing trip somewhere out in the middle of the Everglades. I had a tip. <laughs> And uh, there was gators, so I had to get the hell out of there. So they're I mean, out would, there somewhere. Um, I mean, you're, you're protecting your life at that point. Um, and, you know, your life is more important than those guns. So I think you did the right thing. You know, so one day back to, back to what I was you know, trying to require all that stuff throughout time, but you never know. Uh, I do want to, speaking of bump stocks, I do want to talk about this. I'm sure most of you guys already know, but. Um, President directed uh, well, the attorney. What's next for Florida? I have no idea. Uh, there is nothing as if as, as far as firearmspolicy.org, There is nothing that has been re introduced in Florida, so they don't have anything. And they check that stuff daily, so they're usually pretty good about keeping up with it. And there's nothing in Florida, so that's a good thing, I guess. Um, but like you guys, if you guys didn't know what's going on with the uh, bump stock ban, quote unquote, um, they're changing. They're trying to change the definition of machine gun. Um, in the, uh, as far as the NFA goes, the ATF will regulate bump stock devices and similar devices by redefining the definition of machine gun. Um, you know, something about that yeah. is, in, and I don't recall this, and this is something that we may have to do some homework on, mm -hmm. but does the comment period seem, seem exceptionally long to you for this? Well, I, 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 and I was having the discussion with somebody else, and they're required to give you 30 days, but they typically will give 90. And if you, and it seems like since we were in March when it happened in June, but it actually is 90 days. So um, I think 90 is the maximum, 30 is the minimum, and they went ahead and gave it the 90. So they're giving them 90 days to uh, comment. Speaking of which, I'm going to go ahead and put the link out here in the uh, in both the gun channels and the um gun ch channels and the youtube side there is the link for the comments uh to the atf it's regulations.gov and it has a summary of everything in there and then it gives you down below after it goes through everything and it explains everything there is out there that they're trying to do or what they're you know what is going to happen possibly and all that and then obviously uh they give you um, the option to send your comments and all of that. So go ahead and take advantage of that. Um, should you want to, I, I highly encourage everybody to do so. And, and don't just go over there and say, bomb stocks are stupid or blah, 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 blah. Actually try to make it something that is actually something they would actually like to hear. Uh, whether or not you are a fan of bump stocks or not, uh, surely we can all agree that whether we like bump stocks or not, we sure as hell don't want anyone telling us that we can't have them should we choose to. 
two solid factual arguments to make is number one, um, we're we're messing with definitions that mean something mechanically mean something. So, um, you know, why why are we doing that? Why are we adding something to a definition that is it's pretty specific as to what it is, and this thing doesn't fit? And then second of all, um, in order to change said definitions and all on stuff, it really needs to go through the legislative process. So that's two. That's correct. Factual arguments that you can you can make on this in your comment, I think. Yeah. And it gets out of the whole, you know, I think they're stupid, but I still would like them or shall not be infringed or, you know, it just sticks to some factual basis there. Well, and it actually makes them, you know, maybe think about what they're saying and what they're doing is if you actually send factual thought out responses instead of shall not be infringed or, you know, Second Amendment rocks or whatever, you know. I mean, let's let's if, do something. If the, sound educated here, if, if you can't see the other side's losing by giving the anger angle, and then think that us giving the anger angle wins, come on, yeah. it's obvious at this point that that's that's a right. that's a lose for whoever chooses it. It works for a little bit. It works for some radicals that are going to get all fired up, but when you really look at it, you are you're alienating the entire middle that may listen to you if you're rational. As soon as well, you're irrational, it, on either side, you get shut down. And that's but I think on it, both sides. I think it has a place, though, too, because it's great for rallying the base. It's wonderful. It, it does. But I don't I, I think, I don't think, I don't think it's true. very effective outside of that. Not when it's angry and, it, and aggressive and attacking. It likes it, you know? when it's When it's fact based i agree with you but when it's another attacking or like even the snowflake thing how many people do you think that are in the middle that would be willing to have a conversation to hear really why someone like you or, or you or me believes in what we believe but we throw out snowflake and that's a trigger word for them because they realize that that puts us in a place where we already put them in a category because that's what it is you're putting them in a category already as soon as you use a, a term like that so I don't again just talking language. Yep. Uh, we got a couple. We got a couple questions out here. The first one comes from Patrick. Patrick wants to know why are we commenting again when the ATF already had a comment period separate issue. This is um, the first one was when their comments about bump stocks. Now they're actually talking about changing the definition of machine gun. So uh, it's not necessarily just about bump stocks, but it's changing. The definition. So there's going to be a lot of things that uh, could be included in the changing of the definition. And, and I tend to agree with Clover. If you start talking about the NFA and you're going to restart redefining terminology, then that needs to go through the legislative system. You are robot and bad, brother. Yeah, Kevin, you're you're robot, bro. Um, anyway. Clover, is it just me or is he robot button pretty hard? He's robotting for me. So okay, I just want to make sure it wasn't just me. <laughs> I'm wondering if he dropped his phone in the pool or something. Uh, could be. Got in and out on mute. It looks like too. It's That's weird. the weird thing about it. It's like he's got a little DJ that he's got, chicka, 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 you know going through it. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's, while he's doing that, uh, I carry my revolver and see one action. Asks if there's anything new in Illinois. Unfortunately, there's a lot new in Illinois. Uh, you have um, Senate Bill two two four seven, which is the uh, bump stock ban. Um, and I'll tell you the latest on that is this was, uh, filed in October 24th of 2017. It was signed to the judiciary committee, added a co-sponsor, Senator Jim Oberweiss in February, nothing new since February. So, uh, that one is the first one. Then you have. DEHB 330 age age ban on 2A rights. Uh, representative Democrat Representative Peter Schwartzkoff. I wonder if that's anything to do with General Schwartzkoff. 
anyways, uh, it would raise the age limit from 18 to 21 for purchasing firearms and ammunition. Uh, the latest on this, according to the web, is... Um, committee it's on the house administration committee as of march 14th so it's in committee uh the next one for illinois pahb 2120 age related restrictions on assault weapons this would make it more difficult and expensive for young adults to adequately defend themselves using many semiotic firearms um Basically saying it has something to do with the age going to 21, I guess. I guess it's just a separate bill. Um, that's pretty much what we got for Illinois. Now, I'll tell you the one that uh, on the federal level, and I'm sure we've all heard about it, but uh, you know, Feinstein's assault weapons ban, uh, I'm sure we've all heard about that. That is uh, Senate Bill 2095, the assault weapons ban of 2017. Uh, Feinstein's at it again. I want to I check up and see what they've got, if they have anything for um, where that stands. I don't know if it's got anything. It's probably still in committee, I'm assuming. doesn't have any updates on it. But, uh, you know, this one is going to be interesting to watch because, um, you know, we're talking about banning all semi-automatic weapons at this point. And that'll take us back to revolvers and black powder, basically, is what that'll take us back to. Anything going on in Texas, Clover, that you know of? No. No, we're in, uh, we, we're uh, by whatever, whatever legislature. So, yeah. We are, uh, our, our session just finished, but this was a budgetary session. So it was yeah. not a legislative session that'll kick off next fall. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens because we have um, our gubernatorial races heating up. And I don't know. Are you guys familiar with Jan Morgan? She's uh, she's on Fox a lot, and she's a pro-gun Second Amendment activist. She's from Little Rock, and she's actually thrown her hat in against the incumbent Republican governor that we have because she doesn't feel that he's pro-gun enough. So I don't know if it's a serious, serious thing or she's just trying to push him to the right direction. But the fact that uh, she's actually gained some steam here in Arkansas. Uh, so that's interesting. And, it, you know, she's obviously running on many other platforms, but one of them is she is very, very, very pro-gun. And she has already said that if she gets in, she will push and she will try to do everything she can to get constitutional carry back, which is phenomenal. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Let's see here. Let's check out here and see what everybody... Mid-Tennessee, what's up, brother? Um, about South Carolina, Hatfield says. Let's go check out South Carolina. You have one out there. It is uh, H4424, the South Carolina bump stop ban. Uh, sponsored by State Rep. Leon Stavranakis. Stavrinakis? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go with that. Um, he said. Yeah. Um, basically, bump stock ban. Uh, it is been assigned to the ethics committee. Or no, that's what he's... A, I'm sorry. He is on that. They don't have an update on this. It might not even made it to a committee in South Carolina, for all I know. It just says... Um, the problem with this one, as it looks like to me is it says um, it's one of the most insane pieces. This is, this is from the Firearms Policy Coalition, and they give a, gonna give a summary of everything. It says, this is one of the most insane pieces of legislation ever brought forward in South Carolina. This bill could easily ban virtually any device. Um, so it's, it's over there that says uh, it's too broad and too vague. It is too broad and too vague to expect it to be fairly and rationally understood and enforced. This bill could easily ban virtually any device. Uh, they urge you to reject this measure, but it does not have any um, 
updates on it, so it might not even made it out of the first reading. It might not have gotten assigned to a committee or anything. Who knows? But that's the only thing that's out there for South Carolina. Let's see here. I'm going to catch up here. Happy Every Second Matters. F Peter Fosslin. If the ATF can redefine bump stocks, they can redefine shockwave braces and define definition of a firearm. Um, you know, I guess they could try. Um, I, I don't see that. I mean, even with eight years of Obama, they didn't even really mess around with the definitions of the NFA through, you know, through the ATF side of it. So I, I don't know if they would start getting crazy enough to do that. I, I would hope not. If they do, then obviously we would try to take care of that. But, you know, I don't even think that they're going to be able to really define, redefine machine gun. Do you, Clover? I mean, do you, is this really going to happen? Or do you think it's... I said, I don't know. I, I, I get in trouble for being entirely too optimistic. And, you know, I don't know. If it comes to pass, then yeah, whatever. But, um, no, I mean... Uh, and, and that's what I'm saying. Why Why was it so short when they did this just a couple of months ago, and then now they stretch right. this out 90 days, especially with elections on the horizon? And I don't know. It makes me wonder if it's, you know, not some type of an attempt to run the clock and people forget. Maybe, maybe Congress or something throw out some crazy legislation, and everybody focuses on that, you know, and. Um, I don't know. I mean, with the, the political makeup and all these political games are silly anyway. So, um, but yeah, the, the, the stretched out to the 90 days, uh, that's, I don't know. That's got me wondering. Cause I mean, he was like, you know, Trump come out and he said, Oh, I've directed Jeff Sessions to, you know, inform the ATF to do this, you know, and as you know, bump stocks are band you know basically effective immediately is sort of what he was doing that you know we're going to get this done as soon as possible and then you drag it you're going to drag it out for 90 days when two months ago we were only given 30 i don't right. i don't understand that i just don't one does not add up to the other i guess is what i'm saying well and i, and I think and I, and I like your point maybe they tend to for, people tend to forget you know a little bit and they'll just kind of move on as if nothing ever happened uh, they're maybe they're trying to show that they're serious about this, and then 90 days from now, even the left will forget about it, so they move on and nothing ever happens. There's another part of it that uh, you know I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but maybe it's it could be they're going to go 90 days because they with the elections coming up, they want to hear not for necessarily from us, but they might be wanting to get some information from the RNC or the DNC as to kind of the rhetoric that could play out for the elections and whether or not this could be uh, the midterm elections coming up could be a talking point. And if they sit there and say, well, it might not be that big of a deal, then it goes away. So I don't know. Like I said, I, there's all sorts of things that could be in play here. When you're talking about bureaucracy, there's an unlimited supply of craziness. So you never know. Yep. Um, the tactical six string says, has there been an official report on Vegas and whether a bump stock was actually used or not? Um, I have not seen a report that has come out that said it has been used. There have been reports and there has been pictures that have shown that there were firearms in that room that had bump stocks on it. I have yet to see anything from the FBI or the ATF or anybody that was involved that came out and said that, the, the rifles or guns or whatever, the firearms that were used in the Vegas shooting actually had a bump stock attached. I'm not so sure that we'll ever find that out. That's just my opinion. Have you heard anything differently, Clover? And we were supposed to get some, some more information, but supposed? I haven't heard it yet. Yeah. Well, we were supposed to do a lot of stuff that hasn't really happened. That's true. But I'm talking about as of maybe even a couple oh, of weeks okay, ago. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that was about a month ago or so. Um, let's see here. Jimmy says, what is the date in April? Will YouTube start enforcing their stupid new gun channel rules? Already it in play. Out, huh? They're already in play. Technically. Okay, yeah. Technically, yeah. Yep. Uh, Scott says the question is, does this comment period go past midterm elections? No, the midterm elections are going to be in November as they usually are. Uh, but this will take it to June. 
which is one of those things where they're already campaigning. So, you know, let, let's just say that they take the comments until June 27th, which is what they said. They don't have to, even after the comment period is over, they don't have to make a decision right then. They could take another year, should they choose to, decide if they want to change that definition. So um, even if the comment period is June 27th and all that, that doesn't mean that they have to act on anything uh, after June 27th. They can take however long they want, should they do anything at all. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay, I'm just trying to get caught up. Uh, Roll Call <laughs> says he'll buy me a drink on Friday. Sounds like a plan. Uh, Dano out there is asking uh, about the range on Thursday in Tulsa. Obviously, I'm not going to be there. Are you going to be there in time to go to the range? Or are you coming in Thursday night? No, we'll be in late Thursday night. Um, best I can say is uh, get with either P226 Nut or Cycle Camp on that cycle camp but uh cycle camp would definitely gonna go shoot and probably, cycle leave- camp. probably cycle camp <laughs> yeah I, I would um i think they said they're gonna go over to the u.s shooting academies i've been there several times for competition shoots and it's a great range and uh it's where a lot of the military uh, not military but the uh, law enforcement state police know they do a lot of their training the swat teams will do a lot of their training it's it's a huge range it's broken up into different areas you know you get pistol handgun long range short range and all that but it's a pretty cool place out there so um if you are gonna be in tulsa thursday get with cycle camp and they can probably uh tell you where uh it's gonna be and what time and all of that stuff uh oh lord night strike said he'll be there thursday thanks for the warning we video night strike shooting i need i need visual proof that he's not hurting somebody well you know he yeah. won't hurt anybody at least not if they're in front of him <laughs> uh so let's kind of go through the we've had a lot of people join uh just since we first started we were talking about what we're carrying today, and, and today I am open carrying, uh, so it's an outside the waist, uh, Glock 19. Uh, so what are you guys carrying for every second matters? And uh, it's uncalled for, Night Strike. Well, I love you, bro. I'm just messing with you. Make it too easy. Um, but no, um, what are you guys carrying out there, and are you guys doing anything special for every second matters? Uh, I typically go and, and hang out uh, at my local gun shop and try to – buy several things from them and just have discussions with people uh during lunch i took some pizza all that jazz um but uh, also I, I open carry and it's funny because open carry it's it's a very great area where open carry is really allowed in arkansas there's been so many different decisions and interpretations of of the law in the last few years it's really really a big gray area but um I've never had a problem open carrying. Uh, then again, I'm not sitting there going into places that wouldn't be surprised. So, you know, I'll, I'll go to Walmart and I'll go to my gun shop or something like that. But very few people even notice. If they do notice, they don't say anything. But um, let's see. Night Strike says, how do you feel about the Marine Corps changing the drill instructor position to drill sergeant to make the military more uniform? I have not heard that they're doing that. Uh, I would be very surprised. Uh, that might be something that people are saying they should do. But um, I haven't heard they're actually doing that. And I would be very surprised that they do that just because the Marine Corps is very proud of our history and it's always been called a drill instructor. Um, I, w- I-, I personally would uh, be very, very surprised if they changed the drill sergeant. Uh, the second reason why is in the Army, let's say, uh, there are three or four different, maybe even four or five different ranks that have the word sergeant in there. And I guess they call everyone, if you're any of those ranks, they'll call them all sergeant. In the Marine Corps, we have a sergeant, a staff sergeant, a gunnery sergeant, you know, master sergeant, first sergeant, master gunnery sergeant, sergeant major. But we don't call all of them sergeant. We call sergeant, sergeant. We call staff sergeant, staff sergeant. We call a gunnery sergeant, gunnery sergeant. Well, unfortunately, in boot camp, they're made up of sergeant, staff sergeants, and gunnery sergeants. Uh, So we're not going to call them all drill sergeants. We will call them drill instructor, staff sergeant, whatever. So I don't see that happening unless I have missed something that they're directing them to do that. I think that might be something they're looking at or someone's wanting them to look at. But I don't. I personally would not see the Marine Corps doing that for a lot of reasons, and those are just a few of them. Um, so 
a strike said he saw a news article about it. Well, once again, you know, there could be an article about someone saying they should do this, but that doesn't mean that the Marine Corps, until I see some of the Marine Corps coming out, that they are changing it from, from headquarters, Marine Corps, I would, I would not believe it. Uh, April Fools, uh, did you see new uniforms? The new uniforms they're thinking about using. I have not seen the new uniforms. Uh, yeah, Jimmy says in the Army they call them drill sergeants. Exactly. We call them drill instructors. Um, Spartan says, you didn't miss anything. We just kind of went through some different states' uh, legislation. So if you've got any questions on your state, let me know. Um, cryptic pink. Okay. You can give us what color uniforms you want. We're still going to take care of the job. So um, I, I really don't care less what color uniform is. I know that uh, we'll still handle our business, so it's all good. Uh, just got to work. Yeah, so Spartan, if you have any questions on your state legislation or anything like that, uh, we were talking about it. Uh, let me know, and I can look it up for you. You guys need to go check out Firearms Policy Coalition. It's firearmspolicy.org, and they've got it uh, on the Take Action button. Uh, you can go and search by federal or by any individual state, and they'll give you an update on all the different pieces of legislation, whether they're good or bad. But any kind of legislation that has to do with firearms at all, uh, good or bad, they will they'll kind of give you an update. So uh, let's see here. I am trying to catch up. What's a text message and email? So other than that, let's see here. Crayola mean anything? Yeah, that's funny. Uh, I've heard the Crayola joke about a thousand times a week. So uh, back to the brown frowns. That's <laughs> all good. Hurrah. Hey William. Hey William. Uh, be nice. Be polite. Be prepared to kill as many as possible. Our motto in the army. Uh, yeah, we don't. We don't care about being polite in the Marine Corps. It's one shot, one kill. Shit done. Get home. Um, being polite, secondary, it's it's basically adapt, overcome, get the mission done, and get the hell out of there. Uh, let's see here, William Stanley. Uh, we'll let you guys be, let you guys be political and be uh, be nice and polite. The uh, the natives. Well, uh, now, Leonidas was asking about Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Okay, I didn't see that. Let's go check out Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is right here. You've got two at Pennsylvania. Uh, the first one is PAHB, which I'm assuming is Pennsylvania House Bill 2120. It's the Age-Related Restrictions on Assault Weapons. Uh, it is authored and presented by Rep Democratic Representative Curtis Thomas. It says HB 2120 will make it more difficult and expensive for young adults to adequately defend themselves. Um, basically, it's changing the age from 18 to 21. So um, that one. And then there is a second one. And it is, let me go over here. Whoops. I didn't need to do that. Pennsylvania. Go back to it. The second one is HB 1872, the Pennsylvania Accelerated Trigger Activator Ban. Holy cow. Uh, that's That was said. The Accelerated Trigger Activator Ban. It, is re uh, it was submitted by Democrat Rep Representative Madeline Dean. That's the stupidest name for a bill ever. Uh, it really is the accelerated trigger activator ban. Wow. And it was referred to the Judiciary Committee on October 23rd, 2017. Ban on rapid fire or multi burst trigger activators. Whoa, when, when was it submitted? Uh, it was submitted back in October, and the last action was on October 23rd. Referred to the Judiciary Committee it's in the dead. House. It's dead. Oh, it's, it's really dead. <laughs> it was submitted back in October. It's dead. Yeah. Ban on rapid fire or multi burst trigger activators. And, <laughs> and I can understand why it's dead. That's the stupid. They, they were probably like, you need to go back and uh, at least retitle this. I hate to tell you. Uh, 
boy, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. But talk about a scary that's a scare tactic title. There's no other there's no other explanation for it. No. Uh Starving Troll says, Can you guys do a video on how to prepare for the rally? Be sure to mention that we should bring signs, food, water, parking, etc. Yeah, I can do that. Now obviously it'll be a little bit different state to state, but I can do that. Um not a problem. I can work on that here in the next week or so and get it done before hopefully before I leave for Tulsa. So yeah, I can do that for sure. Yeah, parking uh, is a definite um, thing. Parking got me in November. Yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Do you guys think they're going to try to stop the new box fed bags on the new 590? What? Uh, yeah. Try to stop. Oh, no, 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 no. No, they're not going to try to do that. Well, capacity Sounds is not new. Power three piece, prior performance and professionalism. Uh, 12 gay says it's disgusting what all they do, in my opinion, even as a U.S. foreigner. I must have missed a part of the discussion out there. No, but uh, guys, like I said, do you guys do anything special? We're going to get out of here pretty soon. It's, um, you know, just want to come on and do my every second matters like I always do and go live, talk a little about some of the legislation, talk about what I I personally do for every second matters. Uh, what you guys would do, I, I really, if you want to, this is a perfect opportunity to, uh, if you haven't turned your camera on ever, uh, to turn your camera on, make a quick Every Second Matters video, and basically just discuss what you do on the second of each month to uh, support the Second Amendment, whether it's open carry, whether it's, you know, take pizzas to your local gun shop, whether it's buying ammo, whatever it may be. Uh, what do you do to support the Second Amendment on Every Second Matters? And you might do, not do anything, but maybe this encourages you to start doing something on the second. So um, every little bit helps especially in places that uh, guns may not be as popular as others. It could mean a great deal. I think once people see that every normal, everyday law-abiding citizens uh, are gun owners and firearm owners, that maybe they sit there and say, well, maybe not all of them are as crazy as we think. So I do enjoy the fact that uh, we do something every month, and obviously we like to do more every day, but at least one day a month some people might not have the ability uh, to do it every day, but uh, one day a month, maybe they can set some time aside to do something. Maybe it's go to the range, take someone who's new to guns to the range, and any stuff like that. Uh, you got any suggestions on someone who might be new to the firearms community that might want to start doing something for every second matters, Clove? I'm going to say don't don't even uh, you know you don't have to do a video. I mean, there's we've talked about it many many times before, and I mean the every the you know, every second of every month is just a, uh, you know, something that's been been going on for quite some time now. Um, that we focus on it a little more, I think. But uh, yeah, I mean, Instagram posts, Facebook posts, whatever, and uh, all the hashtags that are out there. There's bunches of them that we can use, so it's a good opportunity to reach out and and. Um, yeah, use those. What uh, you've got, gun life, and that's life with a Y. Yeah, and, gun life. Uh, I'm a gun owner. Um, uh, why I carry is another one. Uh, firearm lifestyle is yep. one. Uh, one more. It's the one that one. Matt come up with. So, uh, and the hashtag every second matters is also you could use it today. You know, uh, absolutely. All sorts of good stuff. Yeah, I chose to to open carry today, and I when I do open carry, I always use this holster. Uh, for more than one, one, I love it. I think it's beautiful. Um, but two, it's usually a holster that, if nothing else, will start a conversation. Hey, that's a cool holster. Are you a Marine? They never seem to talk about the gun that it's in it, you know, which is awesome because they, they seem to see the holster and want to talk about the holster, and they never seem to notice that there's an actual gun in the holster. They're like, oh, that's a really cool holster. Did you serve? Blah, blah, blah. And what that does is it allows a conversation to start on terms that are not negative towards a firearm which uh which i found is very positive to if you can start a conversation out about anything else besides the actual gun then you can always transition to that conversation about the gun but if you start out in a positive way where someone says that's a cool holster or where'd you get that holster that's an awesome thing because you're starting out on a positive note so um i get a little that's, that's, i get a little different uh a little different response with the zombie green rips you know on the taurus it's like 
you know, scared where, him? where'd you get those? You know, no, it's like, it's, it's not, you know, scary black, you know, pistol or nothing. Oh, you know, yeah, people are yeah. used to, you know, when John talking about grips are used to either black or wood or, you know, whatever. And they're like, Oh wow. You know, where'd you get those? You know, what is that? And you know, just a bunch of questions about it. So yeah, it does provoke kind of a conversation about the firearm itself. Yeah, Peter's wanting to know um, what brand the holster is, and it is from Outlaw Holsters. And um, I want to put a link out there for you. Um, I found it on Amazon, actually. I uh, kind of did a thing for Marine Corps holsters or something like that. Came across it. Cost like 35 bucks, maybe 35, 40 bucks. It's Kydex uh, outside the waist with a paddle. You don't have to get the paddle if you don't. The paddle does cost extra, but I, I like the paddle. Uh, but I actually use this for competition. And uh, But uh, they've got every, you know, armed forces, uh, every, you know, all of them. that They've got different designs and all that. So it's called Outlaw Holsters. I love it. Uh, very comfortable. Like I said, I actually made this into my competitive shooting holster. So, uh, yeah, it's a great holster. But like I said, they've got all the different um, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard. They probably got I – mean, they got, plus they have I mean, they have everything you possibly want. they got Punisher and all that. They've got a ton of them. So go check out Outlaw Holsters. Uh, like I said, I think I paid 50 bucks total. I think it was like 35 for the holster and another 15 for the paddle. Uh, so, which still isn't really that bad for a Kydex holster with a paddle. It's 50 bucks. It's pretty good. But if you don't want the paddle side of it, um, I think it's like 35 bucks, roughly, something like that. So, go check them out. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, Carolina says he's going with his Ruger MPR. Um, real call said I muzzled him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Carolina boy says take he, he's taking some church members shooting this Saturday. They have never shot an AR. That's awesome. Let me know how that goes. Um, I think that's a perfect opportunity, Carolina, to video that and do a video. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that would be wonderful. But, yeah, let us know how that goes because that's, that's going to be really, really cool. Um, North Carolina or South Carolina? I think he said North Carolina. Starving Troll, NPR, ha-ha, Ruger NPR. So, uh, yeah, he's in North. Okay. Um, tomorrow guys, um, we're going to do a little discussion that kind of got started. I don't remember where it got started. Maybe was it last night? I think it maybe on last night over on midnight ranges, uh, chat. Someone was talking about, uh, maybe starting a, a gun channel up and, and kind of got some ideas of what to do. I think it was Troy. And, uh, hey, appreciate you, Jimmy. Peace out. Um, so tomorrow night for Tactical Tuesday, we're going to get some different people on here that have different aspects of the gun community on channels on YouTube. And we're going to talk about different ideas and different niche niches um, to um, start. Up, if you're interested in doing content, uh, some different parts of the gun community you can focus on and uh, talk about, um, you know, marketing and all of that stuff and how other people got started into it, how they transitioned from just kind of doing it every once in a while to getting it really, truly involved into being a pro gun advocate on YouTube. So we'll be talking about uh, online activists and uh, are they good? Are they bad? What can we do to make it better and how to get started? So that's kind of the, the plan. And we'll be also announcing the uh, winner for last month's drill of the month so we'll be doing that all live tomorrow at seven central tactical tuesday uh clover you got a show tonight don't you we're going to get ready to get out of here but go ahead and plug and see i know you got one tonight and all that so uh, plug away yeah moa monday tonight that will go down uh eight uh eight eastern on that the as far as wednesday thursday friday i don't know that's all kind of up in the air with the tulsa thing so yeah. uh, there will probably be some type of live streams or something going on, but uh, oh. I don't know that there'll be actually be the you know structured shows like everybody is used to. So, uh -huh. it's going to be a weird week after tonight. Yeah, an awesome, yeah, uh, an awesome week, but a weird week. 
Well, it's going to be an awesome week for sure. Uh, you're leaving Thursday, you said. I'm going to drive up Friday morning. I'll leave here around 6 o'clock. That'll get me to Tulsa, roughly about 9, between 9 and 9.30. And I'll probably have some breakfast if anyone wants to join me uh, beforehand. Worst case scenario is I meet everybody at 10 o'clock at J.M. Davis on Friday. So I'll get up bright and early Friday morning and take off and be there. And I'll leave Saturday, I mean, Sunday, 12, 1 o'clock-ish, somewhere in there. Um Midnight says, Ghost, Clover, Ellis, etc. Thanks for being on the show last night. First time with a pack panel and more wanting to join. Yeah, that was a great chat last night. Uh, so if you guys haven't checked it out, go check out Midnight Range TM's uh, Sunday night chat from last night. It was a great one. I, I had to jump out after about three hours. I had to get some sleep, uh, three, three and a half hours. But uh, it was a great one. I don't know how long it went after that. but uh, It was better than four, I believe. Yeah. Gunpowder wants to know, can you host Hangouts from the phone or does it have to be from a computer? To host Hangouts, if, if you're wanting to go solo, you can definitely do it from the phone. If you want to have a panel, then you're going to have at least to have to have a laptop going. Um, if, if, if you're not going to be able to hang around that laptop, what you can do is start the Hangouts with a laptop and then join yourself on your phone. You'll just have two different icons in there uh, and all that. But to host a, uh, a panel, you're going to have to go through the PC. Um, roll call. Oh no, roll call says he might miss JM on Friday. Hopefully, it all works out. I hope it does, bro. Um, Peter yep. says three and a half hours to show. I will be attending. Uh, wh where are you going to be attending a, a show, Peter? Um, if you're are you going to Tulsa? Because if you're going to Tulsa, then totally we're going to have a gun channel's table there. Uh, so make sure you come by and say hi. We're going to have about 20. I don't know, anywhere from 18 to 25 people from Gun Channel's community is going to be there. So, um, hopefully, come on, say hi over at Wanamaker. We are planning on still having the table, correct? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I haven't heard from, uh, I haven't heard from, uh, oh my God, my brain's not working. I haven't heard from the uh, folks at the show. G was supposed to put them in touch with me. And right. Right. So far, I hadn't heard anything, but so now I so need to. About, it's still Tulsa, so come check us out, man. We'll be there Saturday and Sunday. We'll be in the northwest uh, side of the building. Uh, we'll have a, a table that says gun channels on there, and we'll have a bunch of us there. So come say hi, come check us out, and uh, we'll be around. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Oh, you're fine. So you haven't heard back from them? Um, I haven't. No. Things going good. So, um, yeah, I mean, if nothing else, I'll get in touch with them when I'm there. So I, I don't yeah. know. I don't know what else to do. You know, hopefully if you do hear back from the next couple of days, what might be beneficial is if they're able or willing to, since cycle camp is going to be getting there Wednesday afternoon, if you're able to get a hold of them and ask if cycle camp can come, you know, to get it out of the way Wednesday. So you don't have to worry about that hassle of picking up the press passes. Maybe cycle camp can do that on Wednesday when he gets there, since he's going to have plenty of time to do that. Yeah. And it's, well, and it, it'll depend too on when the, um, you know, when they, when they're there, when they need to, to do certain things. So, right. You know, I, Wednesday may be too early for him. I don't know. And I can always swing through on Thursday and then we can always like last time we can always run over there Friday yeah. after Jam Davis closes. We still got uh -huh. three out three hours once Jam Davis closes. Yeah, Gunpowder said that uh, Armentha did a great job on the table cover. Yes, she did. I saw a picture of it, and it is awesome. So she did a great job, and I'm really looking forward to seeing that in the table uh, this weekend for sure. She did. Just tell her congratulations. That was awesome. Uh, Real Call says, how is transportation down in that area? Uh, are you flying in, Real Call? Um, or are you talking about traffic and transportation? Or are you talking... Uh, public transportation. I don't think you need to worry about public transportation. There's going to be at least 15 vehicles there um, that you can ride with any one of us um, anytime you want. If you're talking about traffic, uh, it's not that bad. Um, at least what I've seen in Tulsa over the years, and especially last fall, um, it wasn't bad at all. Um, so I can't imagine them being, uh, terrible. If you're talking about transportation as far as Uber and all that, you don't have to worry about that. My friend, we've going to have, oh, he's flying. So yeah. Uh, what you need to do is let us know when you're flying in 
and there will be people that will be already in town that probably can come pick you up at the uh, airport if you need us to. Um, hey, Jim, how you doing, buddy? But as far as getting back and forth to J.M. Davis or Wanamaker and all that, you're not going to have to worry about Ubering or renting a car or anything like that. We'll have plenty of us that have vehicles that you're more than welcome to jump in and ride. So don't worry about that. Just let us know. Uh, I'm not worried about the gas, bro. Um, and I don't mind your wife. So, um, yeah, just like I said, we're going to have plenty of vehicles to choose from. Um, you know, there might even be a vehicle that Tardot gets kicked out of his car. And he has to ride with me so that all the girls can ride with gunpowder all in one car. Who knows? But, uh, but no, there's going to be plenty of vehicles for you to ride. So don't worry about renting a car or Ubering or anything like that. Let us know when you fly in, and I'm sure someone can go and get you. Yeah. Yep. Um, you got anything else, brother? No. I mean, as far as uh, every second matters, anyway, no. Nope. nope. You got anything else you want to talk about? Um. No. Nothing comes to mind. I am I am curious. Um, I know that uh, I know Mr. Wright said something about he got his room booked, and I know that the block that uh, Soccer Camp had did had, had reserved or whatever was was full. Oh, yeah. and I had to extend that even, so which is pretty neat. But um, I don't know. Hopefully, everybody's there in the same spot. So I haven't yeah. really heard if anybody is is different. Yeah, from what I understand from a cycle camp, the, they, they gave us X amount of rooms, and that block was completely sold out. Luckily, they were able to give us several more in addition that people said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm with gun channels and all that, that they uh, were able to accommodate. Now, I don't know if everybody was being able to be accommodated at that one hotel, but it did sound like they were able to accommodate more than what the block offered. So uh, I'm looking and forward that's, to that. Uh, and that's really good that we filled it. I mean, that um, – oh. You know, that gives us a little more clout next time. Uh, without looking it up, what are the gun laws down there in Oklahoma? Um, I mean, they're, they're, I, I, where are you from, Peter? I, I don't remember where you're from. So, uh, shout out there where you're from, and I can tell you if they're going to be very, they're very, very, very generous gun laws. Um, they're just like you know Arkansas, Texas, all these kind of states around here. Uh, the concealed carry, obviously, um, you know, same thing as in most states. Don't carry in you know s schools and government buildings and all of that stuff. But um, as far as uh, concealed carry, they're very, very um, generous with that. Um, excuse me, sorry about that. He's from Missouri. Oh, if you're from Missouri, then you're going to see very, very similar laws as in Missouri. Um, I haven't actually gone and excuse me, haven't looked it up exactly because I know that they're pretty much the exact same as Arkansas. So, um, I can tell my God, I got the hiccups all of a sudden. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have reciprocity. So, I mean, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. But, uh, but no, it's, it's, um, they're very good. Obviously, uh, now it comes to the gun show. You're not supposed to conceal carry at Wanamaker. That does not mean that you can't have firearms with you. They just have to be separated. The ammo and the firearm have to be separated. Uh, but you can bring firearms, unloaded firearms, obviously, to Wanamaker. But you're not supposed to be carrying loaded firearms. But you can carry one on your on your uh, hip if you'd like. Just make sure the magazine's out and the chamber is empty. And if you want to walk around carrying you know, an empty gun, great. Uh, you can carry that ammo in your pocket or whatever, but... No loaded firearms within the building of Wanamaker. So, but uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma is pretty pretty cool. Um, uh, ben Farrell is just now getting here. Why aren't you at school, young man? Right. And I don't think uh, there's nothing. Jam Davis, you can carry all day long in there, right? Yeah, Jam Davis, you can do whatever you got to do. I, I carried. Yeah, I don't ever seen a sign or anything there. So, yeah, yeah, I carried all day at Jam Davis, and uh, not a big deal, but. Um, yeah, want to make you just want to make sure you don't carry uh, a loaded firearm in there. But like I said, if you want to carry it on your hip, carry your magazine in your pocket or your backpack or whatever, you still want to. You know, I, I will probably do that. I will probably carry this. This is I, I think it's a great conversational piece, but I'll probably carry that empty and have my magazine in my pocket. Um, so, like I said, 
either that or I might not. I don't know. I, I, I always try to carry something, so I feel kind of naked. Look, when we were out in, in, in Vegas, man, that was the weirdest week of my life. I hadn't gone a week without touching a gun for a long time. That just felt naked out there, you know? Bad. Yeah. Anyone yep. going to OFAST? What is OFAST? Am, am I dumb? Should I know what OFAST is? No. I don't know what OFAST is. Uh, the Oklahoma Full Auto. Oklahoma Full Auto. Full Auto. Yes, actually. Um, I actually, coming back from, uh, great, I'm glad you mentioned that. Coming back from um, SHOT Show, flying on the plane, I sat next to this lady whose husband runs it. And we got to talk in and all of that. And I got an invite to cover OFAST as media. And this is the Oklahoma uh, Oklahoma Full Automatic. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna be there for sure. Uh, I didn't know what it was called. OFAST, because I didn't I don't know the anac- the uh, was it an acronym or whatever. Yeah. But no, uh, she actually. And then about uh, a couple weeks after we got back from Vegas, she sent me an email, and actually I I have a 100 percent invite to OFAST, as that's what it's called. So absolutely, I'm going to be there. So I can't wait for that. That's gonna be awesome. Um, I think it's kind of like a you know, a, a small, like, uh, one that's out in Arizona that G goes to a lot. Uh-huh. What is that called? Uh, big, the big Sandy big, or something. Big Sandy. Like yeah. Big Sandy. I think. Yeah. But, uh, this is supposed to be in, uh, in Oklahoma. So yeah, I'm definitely going to be there. That's, that's, I can't wait for that. I didn't know that it was the acronym was OFAS. So uh, yeah, I'll definitely be there. Um, but yeah, uh, guys, I, I got nothing else to do. It's, it's about three thirty here, Central Time. Uh, just want to kind of say hey to everybody. Do my little every second matters and talk about some legislation that's out there. Talk about what I do for every second matters, why it's important, and hopefully that you guys uh, are doing something for every second matters. I know Clover always does, um, but if you if you haven't yet, then think about it. And uh, let's try to extend it just besides not just the second of every month. Let's try to do it every day in our lives. But at least we can come together on one day a month on the second of every month and talk about why the second matters. Um, and I love the way it plays a word. It does matter. And every second versus a time also, the second, um, you know, every second does matter when it comes to some of these legislation bills that are out there. So f- stay vigilant. Continuously contact your senators, your congressmen for those state and federal uh contact your governors contact your local uh law enforcement your local mayor your local school board and ask them uh what they're doing to protect our kids protect our communities and to protect the second amendment as we know it uh there are a lot of people out there that are trying to rewrite what the second amendment is altogether and let's make sure that that does not happen uh clover if you don't have anything else let's go ahead and, and get her knocked out but uh, do you have anything nope. before we- no, I'm good. All right. Well, make sure you go check out Clover tonight at 8 Eastern, 7 Central at Clover Tech uh, YouTube channel. It's MOA Mondays where it says one-on-one. Uh, I shouldn't say one-on-one. It's one-on the uh, everybody else. He's going to be by himself, going to be a, uh, a viewer-driven Q&A uh, show. It's a great show. So if you, yeah, get a ch- you never know. It's, if you get there early, you can totally manipulate the conversation. Just saying. True. That is true. So go check out Clover. It's MOA Monday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on YouTube and on gun channels. Uh, thank you for everybody who's came out and, and watched this on the gun channel side and YouTube. I appreciate you guys. Stay strong. Stay vigilant. Keep fighting for your Second Amendment, guys. Until next time, Simplify.